Hello again, fellow Skywalkers. This is a follow-up video to my Blue Sky for Beginners video. So if you missed that, make sure you check it out. There are a number of questions that some of you had that I thought best to address in a second video. First, in case you're finding this on YouTube and not Blue Sky, I'm Machine Pun Kelly, or at Kelly Scaletta, there as well as here if you're looking for me. Second, for both this and the original video, I'm attaching a Google Doc in the description. That doc has the full transcript of the video with inline links. So if I say open up something and you're confused, just go to the doc and you'll see the link to what I'm saying to open up to. Just click on that and it'll lead you straight to what I'm talking about. This was the best way I could think to keep from reading off long URLs and dragging out the pace of the video. Third, there were a number of questions about bookmarking. While Blue Sky doesn't officially have a bookmark function, there is a red pin feed. I have the link to the feed in the attached doc, but it's also in my starter pack one, which will include a lot of the names you might recognize from Twitter. If you download that, you can just add the feed along with it. Or you can just add the feed from the starter pack by itself. Once the feed is saved, make sure you have it pinned to your home so you can have a pinned tab. To see your pinned posts, just go to the push pin tab. To pin a post, just leave a comment with the red push pin as a comment. Some users have said they're having trouble finding the pin in the emojis. If it is in there, it would show up if you type the term push in the emoji search bar. You won't find it by looking up pin or red, you have to look for push. However, some people don't have the emoji available. If that's the case, just copy and paste it from someone else, or you can just copy it in here from the transcript, or you can go to this site to copy one. Bear in mind that sometimes it takes a few hours before the pin post will show up in your feed, so if it's not there right away, don't panic. Now let's go on to safety and security. If you're making the move from Twitter slash X to Blue Sky, there's a good chance it's because the toxic culture on the former site just became too much for you. One of the best things about Blue Sky is the content moderation. As I covered in the first video, features like starter packs, feeds, and less let you control what you do see. In this video, I want to show you how you can set up what you don't see. Let's start by looking at the content moderation settings. To get there, click settings and then moderation. We'll start with mass moderation. The first thing we want to look at here is moderation lists. These are lists of problematic accounts compiled by users. They can be manually reviewed or automated. You have to be a bit careful with moderation lists as some MAGA accounts are creating fake ones and mislabeling accounts popular with non-MAGA people in the hopes of tricking you into blocking liberal accounts. MAGA is an honest list which is well maintained and one I recommend and I have it linked here in the transcript. Another type of mass moderation is moderation services. These filter based on content rather than user. They account for things like hateful slurs, tropes, and the like. With these you can change the settings for different types of harmful content. There are three settings. Off means nothing happens, it doesn't treat the tweet any differently. Warn means that they have a label that says that there is sensitive content. And hide means it's just hidden from you entirely and you don't have to worry about it. You can go into the moderation service to tweak these settings to your preference. And there's also individual moderation that you can set yourself. As with the old site, you can either mute or block accounts to your liking, there are also other options available to you. You can mute words or tabs that are problematic, and you won't see any posts with those words in them. You can set it for words, hashtags, or both. You can also set a time limit on how long you want the filter to last. If content already slipped through the cracks, and someone leaves a trolling reply to a post you made, you have the option of hiding their comment for you or hiding it from everyone. I encourage the latter so no one feeds the trolls. If a troll's quotes geets you, 
you can remove your skeet from the quote skeet and then block them to prevent them from doing it again. Some people might say this is tantamount to censorship, but I am not the government and I'm not sending anyone to jail. They have the right to say whatever they want, but they don't have a right to say it in my house. I don't let Nazis, white supremacists, turfs, homophobes, and the like spew hatred in my home, and I won't allow it on my timeline. That is me exercising my freedom. And I think it's important for every user to be able to set their own boundaries and to make their own social media experience something that is comfortable and enjoyable for them. So that's it for the part two. Thanks for watching and like and subscribe, but only if you liked.